Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Meretti from uh, Dar Shifa Hospital. I am the clinical auditor in the quality department. Thank you, everyone, for having me today. I have the privilege and the luck to be the last person today, so I will be providing a comprehensive walkthrough and conclusion of basically everything that everyone talked to today and how we've implemented it in our own hospital. So, I will be going through the introduction, the methodology of how we've uh, improved the VTE in our hospital in Dar Shefa, how we've uh, introduced the electronic medical record, and how we've introduced system enhancements, and at the end, what have these enhancements led to? So as many of uh, the doctors discussed today, uh, VTE is very important because it's easily preventable, it is highly costly, and it is a, has a very high morbidity and mortality rate. So I will be going through focus methodology of uh, how we tackled VTE in our hospital. So the F in focus methodology stands for finding an opportunity. So we conducted a clinical audit related to VTE in our hospital, and throughout that audit, we identified that there was a low compliance to the documentation and treatment. And along with that, we found that only one new tool was used for risk assessment of VTE in uh, Dar Shifa, which was the Caprini tool that we've discussed extensively today. As we have discussed extensively, Caprini is not comprehensive for, uh, let's say, obstetric populations, and it's not comprehensive for uh, internal medicine populations. The second is we've organized the team. Our team at Dar Shifa is comprised of uh, clinical pharmacists, of uh, hematologists, orthopedic surgeons, obstetric and gynecology physicians, health informatics officers, and IT officers. Next is clarifying the process. For clarifying the process, I will next go to process mapping that we did through the clinical audit. So I will be walking through how we do VTE in Dar Shifa Hospital, and while we are mapping the process, you will see how the enhancements were found out or how they were implemented throughout. So any patient that is older than 18 years old and go, is going to be admitted in Dar Shifa for longer than 24 hours is VTE risk assessed and prophylaxis is provided. As needed, of course, as many of you discussed, because prophylaxis is, uh, the risk assessment is segregated to high, low, and moderate risk. So the first of all, the first problem that we might face is the notes or the forms were not automated. So the first enhancement that was done in 2018 was that those forms, the Caprini was introduced to our EMR system, which in Dar Shifa Hospital is the Cerner Eye Care. So we introduced the VTE forms on EMR. And then we faced the risk of the doctors forgetting to do the risk assessment upon admission. So the second enhancement that was done is putting an alert for the physicians to do the VTE within 24 hours of admission. Third of all, which is what we have found through the clinical audit, was that there was only one form, which was the Caprini uh, surgical form. So we introduced actually the RCOG and the Padua risk scores for the internal medicine and the ob patients. And then we proceeded. So now the patients are actually getting evaluated. We face the issue of our physicians uh, bridging anticoagulants. Some patients were coming to our hospital already on uh, oral anticoagulants, on DOAX, and we were facing the issue of bridging those DOAX from outpatient basis to inpatient basis. So this is what when we introduced the DOAC bridging protocol into our EMR. Next is these patients were getting to the hospital, they were receiving their treatments, right? Some patients are staying longer than three days in our hospital. These patients were not getting reassessed for VTE risk. So we introduced an alert where the patients that stay in our hospital for longer than three days get reassessed again for VTE risk. These are the patients I would like to clarify that were already on pharmacological treatment. The patients that did not qualify for VTE uh, prophylaxis and were uh, only on mechanical prophylaxis did not qualify to get reassessed. So whenever the physicians were doing the VTE risk assessment, there is also uh, something we introduced, which is uh, something called power plans in eye care, which whenever patients are, uh, let's say, qualifying for mechanical or uh, pharmacological prophylaxis by VTE2 or VTE4, uh, there are power plans that correlate to that, so you, the physician can easily activate those power plans, and the prophylaxis can be activated on the system to be provided to those patients. This is a, a comprehensive view of the, this is a short view into the methodology of the focus PDCA that was conducted in Dar Shifa regarding the VTE prophylaxis process entirely. 
later on, I will show you what these enhancements that I'm talking about look like in real life on our own system. As many of you, as many of the doctors already discussed, we introduced the concept of population-specific uh, risk assessment forms. The modified Caprini was used for our surgical departments. The RCOG tool was used for our obstetrics patient, and the Padua prediction score was used for the internal medicine and gastroenterology department and its subsidiaries. This is what the forms look like. I'm uh, unfortunately, I don't think it's big enough uh, for everyone to see. But this is what our modified Caprini looks like. Uh, alongside it, you will see in a smaller video, uh, a smaller picture is the bleeding risk. This is the VTE risk, and alongside it is the bleeding risk. And on the bottom, you will see how we've adapted the Padua score into our own EMR. Next is the RCOG tool and how we've introduced it into our EMR. As you can see, again, these are the VTE risk scores. And next to it, in a smaller window, is the bleeding risk assessment. Now, these are the electronic medical record system enhancements that I talked about. So, we were facing right the issue of... Uh, so, as I said in the beginning, uh, our physicians were facing the issue of forgetting to do the VTE uh, upon admission. So, we introduced this... A reminder which upon opening the patient's file in EMR will be triggered and just reminds the patient uh, the physician to do the VTE upon admission now of course with uh, our hospital being ACQI accredited it's a habit for us to do VTE for all of the patients the risk assessment so it's become less needed but nonetheless it's there next is uh, as I said, some enhancements, we, first of all, we introduced the forms to EMR itself, right? And then we did enhancements to the form in EMR. What are those enhancements? For example, the uh, doctors were forgetting or disregarding BMI when it comes to VTE risk assessment. So we introduced the concept of the BMI being inside the form itself, right next to where the scores are calculated. So this is a visual reminder for the doctors to take BMI into consideration. Another uh, alert that I talked about is the reminder, of course, to do VTE reassessment after three uh, days for patients that are on oral anticoagulants. The last, uh, the last enhancement that I did not talk, to, uh, talk about there is our dose range alerts. So we have specific alerts that are related to patients' creatinine clearance. And whenever the patients are nephrologically compromised, and they might have a creatinine clearance that is low or suboptimal. We have this alert that uh, fires for the doctor to take that into consideration whenever they need to modify their doses for the anticoagulants. Okay, our last enhancement that I will talk about is our VTE monitoring, as many of the doctors mentioned, was done manually. So people were checking forms, we were documenting compliances, and this is, and whenever anything is manual, it cannot be as soon as a frequency as it will be if it's automated. So we introduced the calculation of VTE risk assessment and uh, treatment into Power BI, which is a tool that we use in our hospital. It is live analytics of VTE risk assessment and prophylaxis. It can be as generic as a number, and then it can be su subdivided to by department. And believe it or not, this department can be subdivided to by physician. And these numbers are live, and they can be on the day of admission, or any day, or any month, and it can be run retrospectively, or live as the patient is in the hospital. We have done all of these improvements. What have they led to? So all of these improvements have led to an improvement in documentation of VTE risk assessment from 67%, which is when we were in 2018, 2019, and 2020, which is before the improvements and the enhancements that were done. And it has led to a 98% compliance in VTE risk assessment and prophylaxis in our hospital. Uh, in the beginning, we did impact analysis for VTE, and we mentioned that in the GCC it is a little difficult to do because of uh, it being not mandatory, but we did a little study of ourselves in Dar Shifa Hospital. The median stay of a patient for, was six days for a, a DVT uh, admission, and once we have integrated our enhancements in 2020, uh, we have dropped from 26 cases to 15 cases, I believe. This has estimated us into 17,820,000 KD, 
uh, over all of these patients. I would like to say that this number is purely in healthcare expenses. It does not take into consideration all the sick leaves. It does not take into consideration the amount of time that the patient would have to be at home or hospitalized afterwards in the OPD and such. This is purely a number that is related to the estimated healthcare expenses of admission and labs and medications that the patient receives in the hospital. What is next for us is we plan to continue, of course, our live monitoring. We plan to continue to abide to the policy. We have now introduced a service where our clinical pharmacists, whenever we have a patient who is nephrologically compromised, who has many comorbidities, who uh, needs to be counseled, our uh, clinical pharmacy team will go to that patient. They will provide education to that patient about their choices when it comes to their medications. And of course, they will provide counseling when it comes to medication. And as many of you have reiterated, the more educated the patient is about their medications, the more likely they are to abide by it. This is all I have for today. Please, if anyone has any questions, please go ahead.